Welcome to Bella Vista Gardening. I'm Jerry Horner and with me today is Tony Lacazzi. Good morning. And Tony is the president of the Bella Vista Garden Club along with the Benton County Master Gardener. He has both of those titles. And anything with nature or outdoors, he's all over it, whatever is outdoors and, and has to do with nature, right. he, he's in full force. So um, today we're going to be talking about gardening tools and their maintenance and give you some um, tips on what tools are good and what tools you know you need in your garden. And um, also talking about upcoming events and what else to do in your garden in November. There's still a few little things we have to take care of in November. And there really aren't too many gardening events uh, going on right now. We had the Bella Vista Garden Club plant sale October, first Saturday of October. Right, right. And, um, and that was very successful. It was I want very to thank successful. everybody for the turnout. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it was very, very successful. Yeah. And then we had the Bella Vista daffodils for sale, again, the bulbs. And any of the plants that are left, they went to the village wastewater. Right. And they're still available to purchase if you'd like to go there from uh, Monday through Friday, 9 to 3. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, they have them available for sale. Right. And um, the daffodils, the Bella Vista daffodils, have been so successful. Yep. And we also offered them for sale this year. And last year we sold, or we had at least, oh, yeah. what, 10,000 that were four, planted? Four, 14. 14,000. Yeah. And this year we ordered another, what, four or five thousand? Yeah, uh, yeah we, uh, the Garden Club is doing 2,200 bulbs this year. Uh, the POA is doing 2,500 bulbs. Okay. And then there's individual uh, businesses and organizations. I know Arvest has bought them for all three of their banks. Oh, wonderful. So, um, well, if you didn't uh, see them last year, right. last spring, they're just amazing when yep. they bloom in, in a, a mass. So we're hoping. Uh, eventually, we could have a Bella Vista Daffodil Festival. I uh, would hope if so. If we have 100,000 of them planted yeah. all around if the village. If we could get everybody <laughs> to city. participate, we could have <laughs> right. hundreds of thousands of them, and <laughs> right. it would draw people from miles around. It would. And then this year, the Garden Club is going to be planting them at the American Legion, um, the Bella Vista Museum, Birdsong Nursery, Audrey's Boutique, Village House Adult Daycare Center. Um, and uh, macadoodles. So we're right. going to be planting in those locations. And the uh, POA, I think, is planting at the new fire station. Right. At the Highland Gates. And um, I don't know where else they're going to plant theirs, but wherever I, I, they, POA they property. They told me, but anyway, they're, they're, they've got areas. Just look for them in the spring. You can't miss them. Right. So, and November is still a good time to plant your um, trees and shrubs. Move some of your perennials uh, if they get too big. Um, and your iris, it's, it's a good time to plant in November. It's still yeah. kind of warm. It's very warm yeah. for November right now, yeah. but... Um, Yesterday we were 15 degrees above average. Right, you know, and so it fluctuates. Yeah. So. And then um, you could find some good buys at the box stores with yeah, bulbs. Yeah, there's I'm sure they're going there's on sale. Buys right yeah. Now. Yeah. So. You know. And they can be planted in, even into December, you know, if the weather's not too bad. You can still plant bulbs in December. They may come up a little later in the year, when yep. they bloom, but they'll still bloom. And the main thing we came today was to talk about garden tools. And gardeners have a vast array of gardening <laughs> tools. And we just keep collecting them and collecting them. And um, some of our favorites, we wanted to show you some of our favorites and then uh, how we kind of maintain them over the, the winter, get them ready for spring. So um, maybe we should. Yep. Show them. Yeah, why don't you uh, um, get started with yours, Jerry? Okay, my first one here is this is one. This one. Now, this is one I purchased at the Master Gardener State Meeting, and it is a hoe. Mm -hmm. It's very, very sharp. It's very. This needs to be sharpened because there's some of my beds have rocks, and um, they um, the rocks have kind of nicked them up. Yep. So this needs to be sharpened uh, with a a sharpening stone right. so this needs to be but it's very sharp and it it just cuts those weeds off right at the base so this is a great one it's got a nice long handle um, but you've got other long handled ones that uh, you want to go into those are, now or are, you um, yeah want me to go you've got some old ones yeah and um, new ones well in that along that same vein uh, I have one that I'm really 
kind of fond of. This is inspired by the Japanese. It's drop forward steel also. And uh, it's the features that I like about it is it has these really sharp points on the end, which, as you can see, they really can get into some really tight spots. I keep it extremely sharp. And uh, the handle is lightweight but strong. So you can reach, you know, with it way out and just do a little flick of the wrist and, and you have it. You want to get into cleaning techniques now? Or you well, do yeah. How do you clean that one? Well, what I, what I do is you want to make sure you get off, you know, excess uh, mud uh, or anything that's on it. I usually just get a wire brush to get the heavy stuff off. Mm -hmm. uh, hit it with some steel wool, you know, that really gets it down. And then my uh, technique is I just use a lightweight uh, machine oil and I keep a coffee can with a rag in it that is soaked in oil, give it a little wipe, and there it is. And you're ready for Voila. spring. And it is ready to go back right. on the rack right. uh, to keep it in good shape. Now, just to show you how, give you an idea how long some of these things, if you have a quality tool to begin with, here is a hoe that is, my best calculation, we're at 140 years old, okay? We're 140 years old on this hoe. This is drop forged steel, I don't know if you can see this or not. This is one, this entire head is one piece of steel. And the handle is tapered, so it slides in from this end. So as you're pulling, you know, with this hoe, this is a good trenching hoe, you're actually tightening the handle, <laughs> okay? This handle isn't ever gonna come out of there. Uh, and like I say, this one is about 140 years old. And you treat that the same as your others. Treat it exactly, exactly the, the same. same. Okay. And um, what I do on the, uh, uh, on the sharpening end of these tools is a couple of things to remember is I use uh, for tools like that, like shovels and things like this. You want to keep, I, I use a uh, file like this or rasp mm -hmm. that's got a heavier side and, and a lighter one. You want to keep the same angle, you know, the same angle that, that it started with and go uh, against it. You don't want to pull it down, you want to go uh, against, against the edge and uh, and then flip it over and, and, and feel it. And usually if you run your thumbnail down along there, if there's any nick or anything. Yeah, uh, you can find it with you that. Can remove. It's real important that these things, so they, they, just, they just work better for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to. Okay, and then you also have these taller, um, might as well do all the tall yeah, ones now. Yeah, well, That's... this is kind of a one of a little, you know, all, all your pruning tools from, you know, hand pruners to things, but this is an interesting, little pruner here, um, you can see it, it uh, uh, not everything requires a pole pruner or a hand pruner. Sometimes you got stuff that's up at, you know, 10, 12 feet, that sort of thing. And so this, uh, this pruner works really well yeah. uh, for that. And I, the same technique applies, I hit it with steel wool and uh, when it needs uh, uh, sharpening they have little files like this that work beautifully for keeping uh, those kinds of things sharp. Right. And then these pruners here are... Are they bypass? Uh, oh yeah, it's a bypass pruner. It's mm -hmm. drop forged steel. I bought these, I've been married 55 years and I think I got them within the first five years I was married. So these are a good 50 year, years old. He's moving, he's moving around a lot. Uh, okay. Right, about 50 years old. And the first cousin to those are these guys right here, which are, as you can see the shape of it, it's ideal for uh, deadheading. These are really, really great deadheading things. Mm -hmm. so, so if you buy good, uh, qu good tools, to begin with, they're going to last. If right. you buy these little, you know, 398 or 498 things right. at the box stores, last. you're going to be buying them every year. Right. So it's it's a good thing to buy good tools that will last forever. I have some more favorites them. if you want me to go ahead and show them. Sure. That. 
uh, along the whole line, uh, if you have raised beds, uh, you don't always need a long handled hoe, and I found this one. It's also uh, Japanese inspired, and it, it's forged steel as well. And I, the same principle applies. I keep that nice sharp edge on there. Uh, you cannot garden in Bella Vista without one of these guys. Oh, you have you to need, have those. You need three different sizes. Those are mandatory. Yeah, it's mandatory in Bella yeah. Vista. Yes. Uh, uh, this is the hands and knees version. Then there's a lightweight long handle one and a heavyweight long handle one, all depending on on, on the task at hand. Uh, on shovels, I, I just brought one shovel, but I brought a small shovel. This one I've had for, again, this one's about 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing applies. When you got a lot of mud on a shovel, what comes in really handy, keep it in your back pocket. It's just an old putty knife. It'll get off excess mud right away and you just pop it in your back pocket and then you'd, you'd use the wire brush again and then the steel wool and then you'd hit it with the oil rag and from time to time you'd take that file out and you would sharpen it but that's how you can keep uh, uh, all of your shovels for you know basically a lifetime right. uh, by taking care so of So if they're made well to start with you know they're going to last. And then forever. two other little favorites of mine they'll go over really quick is uh, I love uh, this this little leaf rake. <laughs> uh, it's great for getting up underneath shrubs and in little tight places. It's really good if you have shrubs with small leaves that are really bushy and right now they're full of leaves oh, that are yeah. all tangled in there. Mm -hmm. This particular one, if you turn it upside down and you lift up on the shrub, it takes all of that out of there beautifully, okay? so. Uh, it's a handy little tool. It's available right here in Bella Vista, believe it or not. Now, speaking of rakes, there's also a new rake that, I heard about. Yeah, that, tell them about um, that I've seen, and it's called a um, uh, clog-resistant rake. You know how you're raking, and then your leaves get all in the tongs. We're talking a leaf rake. Yeah. Leaf yeah. rake, and you have to clean them out. Right. This one is curved, like the, the tongs are curved like this, so when you rake, the leaves don't go into those tong those little, you know, tongs right. or whatever. So it's called a, a yeah. You spend um, half your time you, yeah, yeah, you always spend half taking your time the cleaning, cleaning the rake. So there's a new there's some new products out that are you know worth looking at. But those clog those rakes that are shaped like a curve, they don't get clogged up. And then a lot of projects that I go on here in Bella Vista, I've got a lot of people, other volunteers have commented on these. They seem to like these when I use them. It's, it looks like a normal pair of head shears, but they have a couple little secrets. One is this little notch right here that will cut a finger size limb. And the other nice feature is a little twist and a twist and a twist and a twist. And now I can reach up, you know, 10 feet high. I can turn it over. I can reach up and over a shrub like that. And if it's an item, um, on the ground, I can reach down like I just did all the liriope out at the cemetery the other day and trimmed it all standing up without breaking my back mm -hmm. like that. And I've got lots of comments on these guys. Yeah. And it is a back saver, I will tell you. There's so. several tools that do have those extended handles. I have a little shovel that I used to keep in the car and it, it has an extended handle. It can be either, you know, this long or it can be a little longer. So those are extended handles really. Are yeah, great. yeah, they they so, really save on the back. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're doing weeding, this is one of the tools that I've had for, I guess, about 30 years. You know, we have we're aging ourselves with all I these know, old I tools. Know, I know. But this is um, this is the um, weed. This is my weed puller, my weed digger. So we can just dig right in the ground. Um, the only thing I should do with this is paint the handle orange because I've lost it in the garden several times and have to spend about 15, 20 minutes trying to find it again. So I think I'm gonna paint that orange. And you notice a lot of the, um, the, the tools you buy now have orange handles, mm -hmm. yeah, so you can. can see them. The other thing that I came across is if you, have, if you go to the casinos, or if you have friends that go, they have these little bungee cords that you put your card in when you put in the machine. I put one of these on my clippers now so I attach this to my belt or my loop or whatever, 
And then when I walk away from this clipper, it pulls me back. <laughs> so um, I haven't lost one yet since I've been using just this drag it along system. With you. It, I, it just drags me back <laughs> to the clippers. And I can't tell you how many clippers I've lost in the woods because I'm surrounded by woods and somehow they just disappear. Right. So this, this will help you hold on to your clippers. Um, then they also have a lot of new, um, new tools that are, um, instead of that hard handled, yes. you know, they're, they're giving the silicone handles. Yeah. And if you have arthritis, they're, they're more, they're easier to work right. with. This is a fairly good one. I've had this a number of years, but um, again, when I clean it up and use the steel wool, and some of my tools, my smaller ones, I will put in a bucket. I'll just clean them up, and I'll just slip them in this bucket that has sand and oil. Just right. added oil to the sand, and it, you just put the bucket in the shed or in the garage, and it's ready to go next spring. You know, you got your tool; it's all ready, and it's ready to go. And you so. can have large buckets. Oh, you can have big buckets. With the, you know, big buckets so that you can got, stand your shovels up in. That's right. Sort of thing. Yeah, because this just does keep them. You know, keep conditioned them, keep and all. Conditioned. And then, of course, our favorite thing is yep. gloves. Yep. You got to have garden gloves, and uh, these the are the world's best garden world's gloves. best garden gloves. <laughs> these you can throw in the washing machine. They got like rubberized edges, <clears throat> but you know, when you have fingernails, mm -hmm. sometimes they poke through after you know using them for a while. There's a rubberized paint that you can purchase, um, and I have. T I think it's for dipping. To, um, handles of tool, tool handles, tool in, handles in. in. Right. And I just take these, put, put these on my hands and dip them in that paint and let them dry a little bit. So you have that rubberized edge back on here again. So you don't have to throw the gloves away. But uh, these gloves will last a long time. So they're, and they're you great wouldn't gloves. believe who in Bella Vista sells these. Oh, I can't imagine. <laughs> it would have to be the garden club. Oh, it would have to we be. We sell them everywhere. <laughs> but they're, they're available in a lot of places, but we have them too. So. And there's also some newer things um, um, with weed control. I, I noticed the Benzomatic, Burnsomatic, they have a, a tool that attaches to your tank, your propane little portable tank, and it has like a hooked handle so that you can just burn the, weed, the, lead, the weeds. Yeah, you, you squeeze you just the handle squeeze, and it has, it has a little, a little release, switch on it. And you go down and you can kill those weeds with the um, with the flame. Yeah, you just burn the top. You burn, and it kind of gets the roots too. Oh yeah. You know, it'll kind of burn the roots. So it's it's um, good for the environment. Yep. Doesn't hurt any anything around your plant. Right. You can zero in on one little plant if you have other plants around it. It doesn't drift like, you know, your sprays will drift to other plants. So it's it's a great yep. little tool for yep. weed, uh, weed, especially in the rocks. Yeah. You know, it's great yeah. in the rocks. And, um, the uh, the brand that some of these are. Let's see, we got Corona mm -hmm. and uh, Friskers. 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 Oh yeah, the Friskers New Deal. You're gonna tell me. They about uh, have a. We saw a scissor, a scissor sharpener. Yeah. It was the neatest little thing. It was only like this big, and you just put your scissors in there, and it sharpened them really, really sharp. It, it really, really, fast. really did. I, That's I like twelve dollars. Yeah. It's like nothing. Yeah. You know. So. We saw that last night yeah, at, at Master Gardeners, Master and, Gardener and Jerry meeting. has looked it up on yeah. the internet. It's like a twelve-dollar item. I know, and it keeps and your scissors really sharp. Really it's sharp. really great. Because when you're cutting things in the garden and you have a dull tool, you're just shredding that that stem. That's right. And it's it's not good for the plant. You need a good sharp cut. So that's a a good thing. Um, Let's see, uh, whatever, what else do we have on tools? Anything else? Um, well, I think um, on tools, that's it. That's I, uh, it. Uh, on, on this tool that you have oh, yeah. here, just a, a little tip I'll uh, pass on to people. If you have Bermuda and Bermuda gets in your flower beds, a, a really long handle flat head screwdriver mm -hmm. is like the ideal tool because It'll slide down through these rocks that we have in Bella Vista, and it's, so it's really easy to plug into the ground. You want a nice long handle, the flat head. Right, screwdriver. and you want the plastic handle. Yeah, you want a, the the plastic handles. The 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 metal shaft goes further back into it, and so uh, it's not as likely to uh, break. Mm -hmm. And and you just you just go down at about a 45 degree angle. 
and just tilt your wrist and lift up with your thumb and you'll get most of that rhizome up. Yeah, that, the main roots, thing is okay. you don't wait until you have so much Bermuda in the flower bed that it's at mowing stage. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> you know, right. it's, it's, it's a, you know, you just walk your garden once a month or so mm -hmm. and if you see a little, little clump of Bermuda, you know, that's the time, take that screwdriver right. out and get that out of there. And, and then if you use your edger, your right. weed eater edger, and you put an edge between your flower bed exactly. and your lawn, that yeah. it does yeah. prevent a lot it of does. that. But really sometimes does. you can't do that all the time. True. So once it gets away from you, the, that's good. But um, anyway, our tools are like our treasures oh, yeah. for garden club oh, members. Yeah. And you know, when you go to garage sales and moving sales, you see some of these tools that you can't find anymore. That's right. So that's the time to buy them is when you see these these tools that have been out in those well, gardens for years. Well, that's when you're most apt to find, you know, the older uh, tools. like a 140-year-old hoe mm -hmm. that, that this hoe will go to right. 400 right. years. Now, the newer ones might be, you know, just kind of attached to the wood with a screw, and within a couple of years, they're going right. to be gone. Well, at a garage sale, that yeah. thing is yeah. 5 or $10. If yeah. you were to buy, if you could find that quality mm -hmm. and buy it, it's going to be 85 right. or $90. Right. Right. So, <laughs> Big difference. Yeah, that does make a difference. So, so but November is the time we also have to put our beds, uh, our gardens to bed. Yep. And I've just cleaned out all my little knickknacks and gazing balls. Got those all cleaned up. And if you ignore doing that now, it's not you know the world's not going to come to an end no. if you don't clean up your garden. But um, the weather's been it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a little harder in the spring right. when you start going. So, but for right now, um, your annuals and herbs, your annuals are pretty much gone. Uh, you can replace some of those annuals with um, pansies for winter color. Right. Pansies do well here if we don't have a real severe winter. So, um, and then the... Uh, There's a new pansy, by the way. There is. Should I tell them about the new pansy? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I always get pansies out for fall color, I mean winter color, uh, through the ice and snow periods. And, uh, but I found um, it's uh, a cross between a pansy and a viola. Oh. And it's called a panola. Mm -hmm. And the bloom is slightly smaller, but the plant grows more in a mound shape. Mm -hmm. But what is really interesting about it is after an ice or snow event, the recovery time is like twice as fast oh. it recovers. That's great. From, from that, and it looks good, mm -hmm. really good again. So yeah, we have to look for uh, they're those. called panolas. Uh, panolas. There was only one nursery in, that I know of in northwest Arkansas that had them a year ago. This year, I noticed two or three or two four or three. nurseries ah, that had them. They're catching uh, on. My guess is that eventually even box stores will be mm -hmm. carrying them. You know, they're not right. going to let anything slip by them. Right. So, but keep that in mind for the future. Right. Panolas. Panolas. I have to look for panolas. Yep. Okay. And your herbs, most of your herbs have died back, but um, you can still harvest your rosemary and parsley and chives during the fall and the winter months. Yep. And they're still out there to, oh, sure. to, to use and, work and cook with. So now your perennials, we have to work with perennials in yep, November, yep. some of them. Well, you know, so just some uh, notes on, uh, on perennials. Uh, you know, uh, mums are still showing some color. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, keep, keep the deer repellent uh, going because the deer love munching on those little guys. Mm -hmm. um, some other things I wanted to mention was uh, on a lot of the things that have seed heads, a lot of perennials that have seed heads, uh, if you can, try to leave as many as possible because the birds feed on those seeds right, all, all, winter winter all winter long. It's a natural yeah. food for them. But now on salvia, if you have any salvia, you don't treat salvia cutting the tops off of it like you do other plants. And the reason is that salvia stem is as hollow as this ballpoint pen. And what happens is, is water gets in there in the wintertime and goes down, and then when that freezes, you're going to lose your salvia. Mm -hmm. So if you leave the top, okay, until 1st of April before you cut it off, that's it's going to winter over much better. And you better. know, for years I was wondering why I had to plant salvia every, every year. year. I'd plant I it and it would and die. No I couldn't can, figure it out. People, that's because I cut it off. I know. It, well, we were all in that same camp, yeah, but we so just want to share that uh, right. with, with you. You don't have to uh, buy your salvia. If you, you have uh, Minarda that attracts butterflies, mm -hmm. now's the time to cut back the stalks, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and you can take a shovel and you cut away about a third of the plant and you can replant that somewhere else. Yeah, because they really do spread the Monarda. Yeah. It's a good spreader. What do you do with your roses? Uh, um, uh, well, I don't, I used to put um, chicken wire and, and, and uh, leaves around them every year, but we don't have those real, real cold winters yeah. like they did when I went up north. So um, I just gotta make sure they got mulch around them. And, but if they're tall, I got some hybrid teas, you know, it could be this tall. So if they're that tall, I cut them back to about three foot, two to three foot, or maybe more three foot, just so they don't rock in the wind, mm -hmm. you know, over the winter. If they're too tall, they might rock and, and get loosened in the soil, so. Then do you go back in the spring and give them another cut? Oh yeah, then in March, I cut them way back to, right. you know, the 12 or so. inches yeah. or whatever. So, but just a little top cut um, they probably won't send out any new uh, shoots to freeze, at, right. you know, in November. So I think you're do pretty you do safe. Do you do any uh, fertilization or no, anything? No, I don't do fertiliz fertilization on roses until, till spring. the spring. We don't want to. We just want them to go to sleep. But yeah. when you do mulch around the bottom of those roses, you want to be careful to stay away from that bud union. You don't want to pile yeah. a lot no, of leaves no. on that bud union. But I just have yeah, loose leaves. I don't right. have the shredded leaves. Right. I use the whole leaves, right. so that's not so compact. Right. It's pretty much air there getting through there too. So. And then um, all we've been doing this week is taking the leaves off the lawn <laughs> day after day. Yeah, so. yeah they're, they're falling uh, oh. hourly. Oh, they are. And the fall color is not what it usually is. We mm. haven't had a very good not this fall year. this year. We had almost no rain in September and very little in October. Yeah. Well, we're and 10 we don't, inches behind for the year. Right. And the cool nights is what's what helps the, the rain. Yeah. With the cool nights, we haven't had the cool no, nights cool like days we have. And crisp nights. So yeah. we're going to have a brown fall, yeah. I'm afraid. There's little pockets of color, but there's, there's not. There's a tree here and there. There's not a landscape of no, color. No, you're going to so. see a beautiful tree. Next year. <laughs> Maybe next year. Maybe next Maybe. year. We, hope, we can only hope, but, you know, just have a few trees here and there, but not a A little something on, uh, on lawns really quick and talk about leaves on the lawn. You know, you don't want to leave them there too long because they smother. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I personally, uh, I, I don't blow them. And the reason I don't blow them is because topsoil is precious, especially in Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. And when you're blowing leaves, you're blowing topsoil. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, I mulch all of my leaves with a mulching mower. I have a mulching mower. The, my lawn can be covered in leaves, and, and uh, I don't want to mention brands here, mm -hmm. but it's a mower designed to cut your grass. You couldn't put a bag on it if you wanted to. I've had it 18 years. Mm -hmm. It's my second one. And uh, it, when I'm through mowing, there is no evidence that a leaf was ever there. Right. So, and that will turn to humus. Mm -hmm. It's keeping the roots warm in the winter. I'm mm -hmm. feeding the soil. The microbes love it. The earthworms mm -hmm. love it. Uh, on and on and on. So and it's on. just a natural fertilizer. It's a natural, it's a natural fertilizer. fertilizer. A lot of people yeah. don't know this, but the average tree in America, if you took the average size tree and you collected all the fallen leaves, and you converted that to a fertilizer type product, it would be equivalent to $50 worth of fertilizer. Right. Right. So as you're throwing these things away and mm -hmm. sending them to landfills <laughs> and blowing them into the POA in areas and that sort of stuff, <laughs> well, keep in mind you're just throwing money throwing away. Throwing money away. Those uh, leaves are, are like money. Uh, but so. on your lawns, it's getting a little late to fertilize, but yeah, I don't if think you it. had a, a natural, not a synthetic fertilizer and the first number was the lowest of the three numbers, like a 0, 3, 3. Uh, but the, the, low, the first number, the lowest number, you, you could still do that this time of yeah, year. Yeah, because first number is the nitrogen. You don't want to uh, put a lot of nitrogen actually, out there. You do there. not want any nitrogen yeah. on the lawn this time of year. The yeah. other uh, thing that you can do that, that I've done in the past and works wonders, uh, and, and the leaves help too, but if you do a layer of compost or humate, uh, if you have a huge lawn, it would be humid, it would be a lot less expensive. Mm -hmm. Or a quarter inch or a half inch of compost that you either buy or if you happen to have that much compost you make, most people don't. Uh, you'll have a black lawn for three days, mm -hmm. and three days later, it, you'll never know that it, it ever went down. works its way down in there. But you want to see who's going to have the prettiest, greenest lawn the first in your neighborhood <laughs> in the spring. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a, it's an, it's, it's, if, until you've done it, you don't yeah. know what the benefits are. So that's, that's benefit. some things you can do with your lawn. Yeah. Now the trees and shrubs, this is a good time to plant trees and shrubs uh, in November. And actually you can plant them up to December, you know, January if you, because they're, they're dormant. Right. So it's a good time to plant the trees and shrubs. 
And, um, but you have to monitor the water, make sure they get enough moisture. Yeah. Um, we, we just had such dry September and October. I don't know what's going to happen in November, December. I have a feeling we're going to be out there watering, yeah. you know, plants out there. But it, so. it, it is, it's, real, it's crucial that you do monitor it. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep in mind on uh, when you do plant uh, trees and large shrubs, uh, try to keep them about two inches above grade. Uh, you're going to have more disease problems and mm -hmm. more pest problems if you plant that plant too deep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Backfill with, <clears throat> with the native soil and don't stomp around, don't be stomping around on the ground uh, when to, to pack the soil. Okay. Pack the soil with water, uh, uh, drown the spot with mm -hmm. water. Yeah. And to keep an eye to know if your plant has enough water, another little trick, it's a screwdriver trick. And I do, I have a large screwdriver with a shaft that's about six inches long. It's a Phillips head. And I insert that into the soil and give it a twist and pull it out. If there's no dirt in the tines, then it's, it's you, need, dry. you need to water because yeah. it's six inches deep. There's no, there's it's dry. It's dry. If, if there's soil in that Phillips head, then you can, you can remove it with your hand. Roll it up in a little ball, you don't need to water. Mm -hmm. So that's a, for your lawns and your big trees and shrubs, mm -hmm. that's a powerful soil moisturizer right. kit. And most homes have uh, a nice big Phillips head screwdriver. Oh yeah, most so, do. And it works great. But you don't, a lot of them don't have the uh, soil uh, moisture meters either. So right. I, I think everyone should have a moisture meter, so. Um, and then vegetables, there's not too much to do with your vegetables. Um, right now you want to maybe add some organic things to your beds. Yeah, yeah. I made some uh, notes here just for those that, uh, on, on your vegetables that when, uh, let me see what I did with those notes. There are some vegetables that you can, uh, uh, like arugula, cabbage, kale, right. chard, uh, green, spinach, out, yeah. lettuce you can get out, and garlic. The weather's been so oh, yeah. warm. Normally, you get your garlic out in October, but the way as warm as it is, you can still plant uh, you in get your garlic out November. right now. Right. Uh, you know, poke them in about you right. know point side up, about an inch deep. You'll have all the garlic right. you want in the spring. So. Uh, but I will say, in your vegetable gardens, uh, if you're not planting a vegetable garden, let's get um, uh, let's get uh, get a soil test done. Yeah. Go go to the county extension office, get a little soil test kit, and mail it in. So you'll know what amendments you need to make right. so that you have a beautiful, healthy vegetable garden. Right. And this, this is a good time because they're not real busy with soil tests right now. So, Well, I hope um, you've gotten something out of our program today with your tools and information. And you want to just enjoy the fall colors if we have any. And if you have any other questions about gardening, the um, BentonCountyGardening.org is a great website. Master Gardener has information. Yep. Um, the Bella Vista Garden Club has a great website with gardening information. Just bellavistagardenclub.com, easy to remember. Our next meeting isn't going to be till January for the garden club, so right. we'll kind of well, take, a, take off. We've got our luncheon. luncheon. But the yeah. regular meeting will be January um, in 2017. Right. And um, I want to thank you for joining me today and oh, learning fine. all these yeah. and seeing all these antique yeah. tools that are still yeah. workable and oh, good yeah, for us. Absolutely. And, and, um, and if you've enjoyed the show, I hope you have, and I hope you'll uh, join us next month again. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. Yeah. Happy gardening. Yeah.